I've been playing Falnarian Tactics because you have no time to game. Welcome to the next When the Credits Roll review, a series in which I only review a game once the credits have rolled. So you can have some faith that I may know what I'm talking about. So first up, some basic details about Falnarian Tactics. It was released on the 7th of Jan 2019 for PC and was developed by Team Shukino. And it took just under 12 hours to complete. What is a Falnarian and why is it Tactics? The game follows the story of Felm and Momo, brother and sister who've survived the destruction of their country at the hands of the classic evil empire. And as survivors, they're on a path of revenge, a path that will lead them to join in hands with other nations, face friendships and betrayal, and possibly fight some form of dark god. Well, so the story in Falnarian Tactics is serviceable, if not the most unique. It does have a couple of interesting twists and turns, but what comes with the story is the effect it has on gameplay as there are times when you have party splits and such which are a little brutal especially when you don't know they're coming as a lot of the work you do leading up to the next battle can basically be undone because of these party splits so speaking of gameplay how does this game work well it's not shy about its fire emblem influence and when i say that I don't mean the modern titles, but the GBA and before titles. But for those unfamiliar with it, what does this mean? Well, it's a turn-based tactics title, so grid-based movement, gotta love those squares, with an I go, you to go turn order, meaning that all my little dudes go, then all the enemy's little dudes go. Following the Fire Emblem, everything including magic is an item and has a durability. So you tend to bring multiple weapons with you just in case one of them breaks during usage. Each weapon type has their own effects, like swords only hitting across around you, bows have a bigger diamond, etc. So if you have a class that allows it, having a couple of different weapons can be beneficial. But remember, each character has a limited inventory, so if you want to bring healing items as such as well, it can be a bit of a juggle, especially mage types that want to bring a bunch of staves or books with different effects. So back to the grid, on your turn, you move your little dudes around and then attack, or use an item. Attacks play out usually in the manner that you hit the enemy and then they will counter back and hit you. So it's very important to remember this, as you might lose your little dude to a counter otherwise. The counter uses whichever weapon was used last by the character as well. This can be important. The characters themselves are pretty simple, having all the usual sort of stats you'd expect along with a limited inventory and a class. The class system wasn't something I properly figured out, and after a certain point, you can use class advancement tokens to advance the next class. And in some characters' cases, you get a choice between a few different classes, but I'm not sure what causes the options, if I'm honest. If it was stat-based, or just having that particular class opened up the other ones, I'm not, I'm not sure, it just kind of, the options were there, and I never quite figured out why. Anyway, when you advance class, you go back to level 1, so it's usually advisable to raise them as high as possible in the original class to get all the level up stat buffs as possible. Occasionally as well, when your characters level up, they'll gain a skill. These skills offer small buffs or effects that make the character more murder efficient. Outside the battle, you get a simple menu system, where you manage your items, characters, progress the story, or use one of the shops, which there are a couple of. You have the obvious shop that uses gold, but you also have a secondary currency that can be spent in the fancy shops for more fancy items and weapons. This same currency though can be spent on giving units XP, which is what I spent most of it on, so I could actually make units I liked viable, uh, especially with the ones you get later in the game. So the other option is side missions. Now these are actually quite an important one, as battles each provide different rewards, um, whether this is a good item, a bunch of gold, XP, but most important, new characters. Now, I mentioned above that the story affects the game, and basically your party splits and other things happen, which mean you have this revolving door of characters that are, are your party, based on where you are in the story. 
And as such, gathering the side battle, like side mission characters, is really important. Because these don't disappear at any point. They're always with you. I didn't realise this until later on, after I was very frustrated because I'd lost the characters I'd invested quite a bit in due to the story. And, and I realised that I had these side character missions all the time. So I switched to invested into them instead. Which I wish I'd done earlier because they would have been better in the later game. But I'd wasted some resources, which is frustrating. So yeah, the side quest mission, the side quest characters are probably the most important characters to raise because they will always be with you. And that's it mostly for gaming. Honestly, if you've played a Fire Emblem or FE adjacent game before, you kind of know what to expect. So what do they think the game did right? Well, for me, it was the size of some of the battles. Some of them are massive and actually feel like large-scale warfare with over 100 units on the side of your allies and enemies. And you can even take a decent amount of units into battle yourself as well, which is always fun to be able to get as many, to use as many of your units as possible. There's also a bit of variety in the classes with guns, bows, swords, magic, everything, which is quite good as well. But where there's good, there is bad. And in this game, as I mentioned it before, really was the splitting of the party that really affected my opinion of this game as you can probably tell it feels like such a little thing but had major implications because losing a bunch of troops just that you've invested e effort into raising is frustrating and with it the sheer number of story characters means i never felt i truly got to know anyone outside of film and momo as there were just so many people and they just all had something to say I kind of start just lost track of who was who and what, where they were from and such because there were just so many of them now normally I'd mention critic reviews as well but it actually doesn't have a rating on Metacritic so to sum it up while I did get some enjoyment out of it I feel that's because I'm a tactics game fan and I tend to enjoy them anyway at its heart it's a wannabe Fire Emblem game and doesn't really bring much to the table beyond that add on the frustrations I had with messing with your party, a cardinal sin in my opinion for tactics games. So in an attempt to not sound too mean to our own tactics, it's a very mediocre affair overall. So my final rating is for niche fans only.